We felt their presence. Friends felt their presence. It was the spirit that we had in the house. could never go to sleep. He said, I see a ghost in my room every night. I was scared to death. A lot of people were buried on this property, scattered. Somebody's talking to me. I felt it all when I lived here. I just couldn't believe that I really had seen a spirit. I just have to warn you, there are some trapped ghosts here. Why did the spirit pick us? You ready to go find out? I can't wait to find out. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Kim Carnes. We're going to the first house that my family and I moved to when we moved from LA. And I'm feeling a little bit of trepidation going back. I haven't been back to the house in 13, maybe 14 years. And it's still a huge part of me is in this house, and a huge part of the house is still with me. So I'm excited about it, but there's also trepidation. We are in Tennessee, and we are in a small suburb outside of Nashville called Franklin. And we're headed to see Kim Carnes. She is the famous singer-songwriter, best known for her amazing song, Betty Davis Eyes. I don't know much, but what I do know is this property that we're going to, things started happening to her when she bought this home. And apparently, she's since moved out of this home, but she feels very drawn to go back and put something or someone to rest. So maybe a long day today. I was born and raised in LA and never really thought that I would ever leave it. But I'm a songwriter and more and more I was going to Nashville. At the time, I had two boys at home and didn't like leaving them. So my husband Dave and I decided it would be good to move to Nashville. So I got a realtor and after a couple days of being with a realtor, she said, there's a really special house. It's on the historic register. And it was built in 1843. It's for sale and I'd like you to see it. And when we walked in the front door, a feeling came over me that was just overwhelming. The house was alive. It had an energy. It was just a warm, good feeling. And my husband, Dave, felt the same way. So by the end of the day, we were making an offer on the house. The first night at the house, Dave and I still had the whole house to unpack. And I heard my son, Rye, calling me. Mom! 
So I walk into his room and I can see that Rye is very upset. He's very scared. And he said, a little girl was here. She walked through the door and she stood by my bed and she just stood there looking at me. And I had no idea what to say to him other than it's just because it's a new place. But he was really shaken up. So I sat with Rye until he fell asleep. And um, I went downstairs and I told Dave the story. We both said, we know Rye, and he just wouldn't make up a story like that. That gave Dave and myself a very uneasy feeling. As time went on, he got more and more afraid because he would see the little girl over and over again. And his fear would go away in the daytime. It was always when we'd put him to bed at night. I knew he wasn't making it up. I knew that he had seen something. I just didn't know what it was. That night, I put him to bed and Understandably, he was very afraid. So I sang to him until he fell asleep. Instead of getting up like every other night and walking out, I stayed on his bed, but I stayed awake. And all of a sudden, I felt chills up and down my whole body. After a moment, I see a little girl. She walked in the room, stood by the bed, and just stared down. She had on a dress with flowers on it, and she carried a doll. And I was really, really scared. When the little girl looked up and noticed that I was looking at her, She turned and disappeared right into the wall. She just vanished. I'm freaking out. I've never seen anything like this before. I then really knew Rai was not imagining any of this. I had just seen the exact little girl that he described. This was real. I'm absolutely positive that I saw the little girl who I was seeing every night. But the minute I moved out of the house, I felt a huge sense of guilt that I was abandoning this little girl. And I have never let go of that. I don't know anything about Kim. I just know she's a medium, and I can't wait to meet her. And hopefully, Kim picks up on the little girl, because I would love it if she helped her. That would be amazing. That would really be amazing. And that would um, close the door on a really important chapter of my life, of Rye's life, of our family's life. I have already started to tune into Kim's energy. And uh, I feel that Kim is a very old soul, which means she's lived many lifetimes. But I also sense that Kim has issues of being abandoned. And I want to actually address that with her. I'm getting a lot of different visions. And so far, there's a child energy with me. I wish I could say if it was a boy or a girl. I, I, I just know this energy is playful and innocent. And I'm not quite sure if the spirit has crossed over yet. You never really want to see anybody stuck in between dimensions. 
especially not a child. As a mom, that really breaks my heart. Getting the sense that uh, she had this experience inside her home, but I'm also getting it might be connected to the land that the home is built on. So I definitely want to explore the property. We must be getting close. There's a lot that has taken place here. A lot more than what meets the eye. Here we are. Okay, let's see this. There's a lot of activity here that I'm sensing. People were buried on this property, scattered all around. I'm getting a very uneasy feeling in the pit of my stomach. I wonder if this was a cemetery at one point. Somebody was buried, like, right here. I keep seeing an older woman walking over and just kneeling down and crying over a grave. I just have to warn you, there are some trap ghosts here. Something here does have a hold on you. Somebody was buried, like, right here. I keep seeing an older woman walking over and just kneeling down and crying over a grave. I feel like the burial was of a child because I feel her grief as a mother or a grandmother where she just couldn't get over this death. And that little child is still following me, the one that I was seeing in the car. I just wonder if Kim would know any of this. I'll wait till Kim gets here. Entrance looks exactly the same. We could still be living here. What a bizarre feeling, like time has stood still. It looks exactly the same. Hi, Kim. Hi. Nice to meet you, Nice finally. to meet you, too. Are you Kim or Kimberly? I'm just Kim. So am I. How long has it been since you've lived here? 13 years. Was there a different house you were going to buy before this one? Almost, yeah. The realtor said, well, it's just a really interesting property to see. So I went, OK, I'll go. And we walked in the front door. And that was it. That was it. That's what I'm thinking. I feel like it, it, it picked you. It did pick us. So there were quite a few things that I was picking up in the car. And I hope to revisit those visions as I scour the property with you because of course and I want I have things that I too want you to validate please anything yeah. are you a little frightened because I'm loving that you're wearing a cross I feel Thank you. that this will be like a sense of protection for you am I gonna need it yikes <laughs> so what's your burning question for today I would like to know why did one spirit in particular show themselves to my son and to me why did it pick us? OK. I'm hoping that you could help me have a sense of closure. So it may be that something here in this home or on this property does have a hold on you. 
Absolutely. I've never been able to let go of this house because I always felt this huge sense of guilt, like I abandoned the spirits here. I was waiting for you to say that word <sighs> because this is what I was seeing in the car. You're very sensitive to the issue of abandonment. Yes, that's true. It's never left me the feeling that I abandoned the spirit here and abandoned the house. And I would like to know that they know I feel like that. And okay. That I haven't really abandoned them, that they're in here, they're in my heart. In order for you to have guilt with that emotion of abandonment, you must have some sensitive sore spot with it. Otherwise, it would never dawn on you and it would never cross your mind that you're abandoning them. Does that make sense? I, uh, yes, I understand. Yes. I always like to kind of know what I'm getting into, you know, a little bit. Yeah. But I don't really want you to divulge anything really that doesn't pertain to what we're doing. You can ask anything at any time. That's great. Especially if I wind up talking about the subject or the top that you have questions about. Yes, that would I would be love key. that. So I really would love to kind of walk around the property. I can't wait for you to see uh, and feel I, everything. I just have to warn you that it could be s some things that are not so nice. OK. I just feel stuck in this box. Are we just like, <laughs> of course, walk a little bit? I can't wait, bring it on. <laughs> okay. Somebody's talking to me now, wait a minute. I was sensing a child in the car. I didn't know if it was a male or a female. And all of a sudden, just in the back of my head, I heard a spirit of a little girl. I did see a little girl. You're dead on. Um, it's very much about a little girl. Wow, OK. I would love to go and see if I can find where that little girl's energy is the strongest. I really do want to go that in that direction. Let's go. There's something to this. I feel her energy all around this place. A, uh, I think I have your father coming through. There's two names I'm picking up on. One is Raymond. Raymond. My father was James Raymond Carnes. Oh, OK. <laughs> he just joined us. There's something that happened at the end of a season for your family. It was either a birthday or a death. And I even think maybe it had to do with moving into this house. Oh my gosh, we moved right on the cusp of spring and summer. And the day we moved in, I got a phone call that my father was passing away. And it was a matter of hours. And when I left California, he was fine. Wow. And I always felt this strong sense of guilt, which has no rationale, that if I hadn't moved from California, he would still be alive. And of course, that's not a rational thought, right. but that's what I thought for a long time. Well, because it's again... Like I changed, the, I upset everything. I changed the balance. Well, I will break that down to you for one word. It's abandonment. You abandoned there your it is father. Again. I just am pointing it out to you because it, it may or may not have anything to do with what happens here today. Sure. But if nothing else, it's a big part of Kim that needs to be resolved, hopefully, in this lifetime. The same word, yeah. Hold on a second. I'm not going anywhere. Divorce. Mom and dad were divorced? Mm-hmm. You know what his best memory is? He just told me. What? He said when he would spend time with you, like, I guess, on the weekends or whatever it was, and you would it looks like you might have had a long drive from one place to the next. Yes, yes, a couple hours. That's what he said. And that you would sing together. Long trips we took and together. Well, and, and, the two of us would sing 
the whole time. That's what his memory yeah. is. My dad was my music connection. My absolute fondest memory, my best memory of my dad was when I was a little girl, he would play Claire de Lune on the piano and I would dance around the living room. Uh, your dad is like mentioning his whole family. William? I keep picking that name up very strong. William, William. Who's William? That's my mom. Her birth given name was Billy. She's passed on? She, yes, yes. I used to, joking around with her, call her William. I would call her that. Your dad said, tell my daughter no hot feelings with her mom. And <laughs> on the other side, he just said that. Oh, yeah, that's a can of worms. <laughs> So whatever they needed to patch? They did. Well, she did. She forgave him. You're right on the money. That's exactly what needed to happen. That's what he said. Yeah. He said, no, she finally forgave finally me. Finally is, that's a key word. Well, he just said, he said, it was my job to always smooth things over. That's what I did for a living. He says, after all, I am an attorney. Is that true? Yes! Ah! Oh my God, he's giving attorneys a bad name. Okay, we're, we're rolling here. <laughs> he's very verbal. Oh, he's so, yes, and charismatic and just. Well, um, he had the perfect job then. Oh, you pegged my mom's feelings exactly. Well, it's all from your father's point of view. And he said he really has been waiting a long time to, to talk to you. Um, your dad said that although he wasn't able to say goodbye, he said, and this may sound a little creepy to you, but he said he was at his own funeral. Oh, he was. I feel like there's a lot of graves throughout this property. I'm starting to get jittery right now. Uh, my heart is racing really, really fast. Your dad said that although he wasn't able to say goodbye, he said, and this may sound a little creepy to you, but he said he was at his own funeral. Oh, he was. He said he was. And he also keeps showing me a, a song that somebody dedicated to him. I keep seeing this, which may indicate uh, someone played an organ or a piano for him. Piano, yes. What was that? My youngest son, Rye, who was seven at the time, um, the reception after my dad's funeral was at their neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. And um, people, their friends, kept coming up to me saying, oh my gosh, you must be so proud of your little boy. He's such an incredible piano player. And I said, huh? He said, what are you talking about? You didn't know? I, did, I had never heard him play the piano before, ever. And he didn't. So finally I went, all right, I gotta go check this out. And I went in the room and Rye was sitting at the piano playing Claire de Lune. I was speechless. I mean, he had never done anything like this before. And we came, came back to this house and I asked Rye a couple of weeks later to play the you same song. And he said, I can't do that. And I said, why? You did it at Grandpa's funeral. He said, I could only do it at Grandpa's funeral. That is a, a one-of-a-kind story. Yeah, it gave me such a wonderful sense of he's here. He's watching everything. He's here with us, and he's chosen Rye to come through, to speak through. Walking around a little bit before you got here, I feel like there's a lot of graves throughout this property. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I would call this a cemetery. The only thing I'm, I'm not understanding or I'm not too sure about, these are different types of, I'll call it a coffin, but it's not a coffin. It's, I guess, the container that they would put the bodies in. This looks unusual. It's not made out of wood. Uh, I just, 
they look very homemade. Oh yeah, you're absolutely right. I've just heard all the stories of when they were, different people were adding onto the house. Yeah. That they kept finding these stone graves. And um, a Native American chief and a coroner would be called every time they would find a body and the chief would bless the body and the coroner would record it. Okay, and, that um, makes sense then why and, I'm but, getting. But almost everywhere, I mean, when you say it's almost like this is a cemetery, yes. Here, so especially. Especially here, around here, yes. step I take, I'm getting, um, look at this little guy. Yeah. Hello. Hey, by the way, speaking of animals, mm -hmm. um, you have a Labrador coming through with you. Oh. Uh, you have two. Yeah. You yes. have two and Do one on each side. Do not make me cry. <laughs> You have one here and one there. And, and as we're walking, oh. you have two labs walking with you. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Because I feel like they're still with me. They, they are. just died last, almost a year to this day. Um, oh, wow. No and wonder. we still have not been able to get another dog, and we've never been without dogs. So to me, black cats are good luck. Are good luck. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll oh. take it. Something else just appeared in my vision. One of the windows was somebody's bedroom. And I feel as if from the bedroom window, they would look down at this resting place. I am calling it a resting place, somebody. Sure. And it feels like a mother or a grandmother who would just stand like vigil over this space. I feel like it might have been connected to this little girl. This is what I was seeing earlier, but this looks different from the other graves that we saw before. You don't know anything about that, I'm assuming. Um, I do know something about that. I can wait till... Uh, I'd rather you wait. Uh, to... I will. I, I guess that's pretty good for now, for now. But you'll... I want to see more as I go. But I do think we need to go inside the house if we want to get the rest of the story. Well, here we are, and it's the moment of truth. There's the front door. It, it's a little eerie. I'm starting to get jittery right now. Uh, my heart is racing really, really fast. I'm not quite sure if you're ready to go in there, but once I open that door, anything can happen. The older woman is back. There's something else she wants to show me. Oh, my God. Something terrible happened. Well, here we are, and it's the moment of truth. There's the front door. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if you're ready to go in there, but once I open that door, anything can happen. Let's go. Yeah? I'm ready. OK. OK, wow. wait a second. Oh, my god. I have the piano exactly where my piano was. Same place. How does it look to you? How does it feel? It's, it's like the time since I've left and now didn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird. It's very bizarre. But it's definitely, definitely the same feeling. OK, so is that a good thing? It is a good thing. 
Yeah, it is a good thing because it's what drew me here in the first place. Or whatever the energy is that drew you in the first place, I feel that that same energy helped allow you to create and to be a clear channel. Absolutely. I mean, from the time we moved in here, I was so prolific, I couldn't not write. I see this little girl. She can't really speak, but your music excited her. Oh, that's so great to know. Isn't it better sometimes mm. when you play for people that can appreciate the, the, the music? Oh, completely. That's, that's what you want. You, you want to touch somebody. I mean, that's the whole deal with music. I feel a lot of activity upstairs. Significant events happened upstairs. That's what I'm being shown. Yes. For sure. OK, let's go. Okay. I, we have to check it out. It's been so many years since I've walked up this stairway. I feel like my legs are like rubber walking up, like almost like they feel heavy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that could be an indication of a lot of walking into a lot of spirit activity. Ugh. OK, wait a second. Oh my God, something terrible happened, like not too far. <sighs> we need to go out this door. This is out to the balcony. You got it? Mm -hmm. oh, oh my, this is it. This keeps showing me Something was going on below. Might be some sort of party. And what I do know is the, there's a young girl, she's about six-ish maybe, six or seven. She runs out here. She looks over the balcony because there's activity going on down here. There's people. But she was short, and so she couldn't. So she like went like with her belly over the railing and just toppled. Oh my gosh! But people were there and saw this. That's just. But they had they couldn't do anything. Yeah, it of course. Too quickly. I got such chills knowing that that's what happened. Hold on a second. The older woman just joined us. And she is the same woman that I saw back by the window. She's luring me in the home. There's something else she wants to show me. This is a hot spot. This is the room she wants to show me. Wanna go first? You go first. I don't know how ready you are then. All right, let's see. Let's see what goes on. This was your son's room, this wasn't was it? This was my son, younger son's room, yes. After we moved in here and he would go to bed, he would always call me in because he was so scared. He couldn't go to sleep um, because he didn't know who he was seeing but he was seeing a little girl walk in his room and walk by his bed. And it terrified him. And he kept thinking, what's wrong with me that I keep seeing this little girl every night and can't go to sleep? So I would lie down with him until he'd fall asleep. And one night after he did fall asleep, I turned to face this way. And I finally saw her. And I could tell him the next day, I saw her too. So that put his mind more at ease, that he wasn't going crazy seeing right, this right. little girl every night. Hold on a second. She's still here. I just, she interrupted me. She says, don't call me the little girl. My name is Mary. And earlier, 
again down in the yard when you sensed someone looking out a window and yes. you said it's almost like a grandmother figure looking yes. at what I've been told is that her grandmother was the one that really looked after her and gave her the most love and her grandmother was she and Mary were very close when she fell over the balcony she's telling me how much grief she caused her family by that accident but she doesn't call it an accident she says by what i did so she's blaming herself. so she's blaming herself i was foolish enough to go out on the balcony yes. and fall over but now the grandmother's here trying to encourage her to move on to, yes and i'm certain that that's happening i'm just wondering if she got so attached to you that she didn't want to leave without you She could relate to you because she felt abandoned. She said, but this is my other family. The grandmother's gear trying to encourage her to move on. To, yes. I'm just wondering if she got so attached to you that she didn't want to leave without you, or at least without saying goodbye to you. I came back to say goodbye to her. She said, but this is my other family. Ah. <sighs> she really likes your son, too. Well, he was seven, she was six, and I always thought in my own <sighs> mind that she was just looking for a playmate. She was looking for a friend, and that was Rye. I truly feel she could relate to you and a lot of the fears you had, which we talked about earlier, because she felt abandoned. Because everybody moved on. Everybody moved except on. Except her. There was something that she saw in you that made her comfortable and made her feel safe, like a mother would. She needed you to come back here to help her let go. I can't help but feel that that's exactly why we're here today. And she my really grew a sense of guilt of leaving her behind. But you know what? Sometimes we think things are our own ideas, but in fact, we're led by spirit so much. Yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do today is, I'm going to, and I hope you help me do this. I'll help you do anything to help her. Well, of course, because you really are the one she looks up to. Ugh. I can actually start the conversation going and I want to tell her that what happened to her was an accident and it could have happened to anyone, but you need to be with grandma and your whole family. Is there anything you want to say to her? I would say go find your parents, go find your brothers, your sisters, go find your grandparents and be with them because family is everything and they love you unconditionally. And I just said to her that Kim will always keep you in her heart and you will see Kim again one day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The good news is, and I'll just tell you my observation of how she's coming across to me is, she's not arguing with me and she's not fighting me. I almost feel like she's surrendering and throwing in like, the, like finally somebody gets it and like, it is here to help me. Now that you told her to go, I will continue to talk to her, but I anticipate her leaving tonight. I truly tonight? do. Tonight? Absolutely. Really? You yes. think? Good. That makes me feel great. What a day and night, huh? So I want to hear how you're feeling. I think Mary, I really believe, made this happen. That's why we're sitting here. I think that's why this all happened. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. You, really... you were pulled back. Absolutely pulled back. But like, I pulled came back. back to see her. Yes, you did. You did not abandon her. Your dad was a steady heartbeat throughout the whole day. 
And I have to tell you, he's still here. I'm so proud of him. What I am hearing, and I do want to say from him, is how proud he is of you. Oh. And I'm so glad that he joined us, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad he did, too. That yeah. he really, really needed to tell you that your guilt for moving here the, yes. is totally not connected. Everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. But how nice to hear that my moving here did not cause his death. Because... Not at all. You just come across to me as someone who takes on everybody's responsibility and it's not yours. Life happens. You need to move on. Coming back today, you're showing Mary that it is okay to move. Absolutely, yeah. Okay? Yeah. I just really think Mary wanted to say goodbye to you. And, and now she can go. I can say goodbye to her, you know. Formally. Yes, exactly. Without any guilt. That means everything to me. It feels so good to have you tell me what you see and what you feel that I know was here is so validating. It's just incredible. Well, I did bring you a gift. What is that? Well, this is a stone. It's called Unikite Jasper. And do you know what that stone is good for? No. Releasing guilt. <laughs> it helps clear your conscious mind. Be more open, more comes through. This is gorgeous. Isn't that Thank nice? you so much. You are so welcome. Mwah. Mwah. Thank, Thank you. What my a pleasure. This morning when I woke up, I was filled with lots of emotions. I wanted to know why the little girl showed her spirit to my son, Rye, and to, my, to me. And Kim felt everything from this property. And, and not only from the property, but she goes deeper and digs into um, your personal life. I mean, there was so much about my father in particular, but my family and circumstances growing up that she knew. I feel so fortunate that I know her and um, she just blows me away. She's incredible. Her gift is incredible. Looking back when we met Kim, she wanted to uncover the truth about why she and her son were haunted by a ghost of a little girl in Tennessee. What we discovered was that the little girl had become so attached to Kim that she was waiting for her to return before she would cross over. And we also learned that it was Kim's feelings of guilt and abandonment that drew her back to help this young spirit find peace. Ghosts can get attached to the living for many reasons, but they're not always threatening or dangerous. And if we sense that they need our help, we should follow that instinct. Because if we can help spirits find peace, we might just end up finding it for ourselves. <laughs>